church come to change its view about the shape of the earth and um, earth's orbit around the sun? Okay, I would disagree strongly that the, I don't think there was ever a time that the church taught the earth was flat. That's been researched thoroughly, and it's just simply not true. The Bible teaches very clearly in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22, that the Lord sits upon the circle of the earth. I think Christians that read their Bible have always known it was round. I don't care what Luther or anybody else taught. I care what does the Bible teach. There may have been a few people who taught that. They were simply wrong because the Bible clearly teaches the earth is round. As far as the geocentric theory... I am a heliocentric uh, centrist, okay? I taught her science for years. I am pretty firmly convinced the sun is in the center, not the earth. But uh, there, is a, there are a surprising number of people today, scientists today, who are still geocentrists. Uh, I disagree with them. I think I can, we can talk about all the Foucault pendulum and all the arguments for heliocentrists if you'd like. But um, I think that the earth is the center of God's attention and may actually be the center of the universe, even though it's not the center of our solar system. There'd be two different things. As far as we know, we look in all directions and see stars equally spaced uh, on all directions. So the Earth may indeed be the center of the universe, not the center of the solar system. That's the difference. Okay. Um, so in your view, then, it's not that science really had nothing to do with, with uh, changing people's views on, on the shape of the Earth and the uh, relative Oh, yeah, yeah. Wrong. I would say people have taught things that are wrong throughout history, uh, which is why I'm here tonight to straighten this out. Um, that... Um, but that doesn't that has that is not a reflection on the Bible. Um, it's it's in our interpretation of the, just because some people teach things doesn't mean the Bible teaches things, and that's the confusion. So there may be some people who have taught different things throughout history, you know, that are that are simply wrong. The scriptures is what we have to stay, take as our, our rule of faith and practice, not the uh, not the current teaching going around. And you mentioned. I guess I don't know if it's rebuttal time, but 30 million species, that's come up several times tonight, and I strongly disagree. The Bible told him to take the different kinds. There are about 8,000 basic kinds of animals in the world. Uh, God, God, was to, God told Noah to take those in whose nostrils was the breath of life and those on dry land. And the number 30 million includes fish and includes insects, which didn't have to go on the ark. About 8,000 kinds of animals is all that's necessary. Noah, Adam could have named them in two hours uh, to say 8,000 words you, at, at, at 100 words a minute. I speak 300 words a minute when I get going fast. You know, at 60 words a minute, you can name 8,000 animals in two and a quarter hours. So Adam didn't have to wait all day to find Eve. A uh, yeah. couple hours. Wow. Okay. He's very patient. <laughs> um, okay. All right. <laughs> I've been looking through the questions, so I'm, 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 I think we're supposed to be in the rebuttal phase although I've heard you talking a lot, Dr. Hovind. So do you feel like you've accurately, let's see, rebuttal is actually, excuse me, Jamin, it's your turn to rebut Dr. Hovind's, but I guess the question is, is do we feel like we've covered this issue? Or do you want to rebut what he said? Which issue? Yeah, wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a leap then, and we're going to talk, we're going to take some of the questions from the audience. And... Um, and what's going to happen here is I'll ask the question, and you'll both get about two and a half minutes to respond, all right? And so mm -hmm. the first question, uh, Dr. Hoven will get to go first, and the second question, Jamin, you'll get to go first. Um, and I, the, uh, we have quite a few questions on dating, scientific dating, and where that fits into this whole argument. And instead of asking an exact question, I figure that just talking about dating and where it fix, fits into the young earth, old earth debate would probably be enough lead for the both of you. I Fair don't want him date, to I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Hoven, would you like to start talking about scientific, <laughs> the scientific dating method as scientific. it relates to the <laughs> age of the earth? <laughs> Scientific dating, like using the internet or something. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Go ahead and get my slides. You're determined, both okay. of you, to be funny, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, I cover carbon dating, particularly, and uh, se several of the common uh, dating methods on my video seven. I won't have time for that in two and a half minutes. But back in 1949, when carbon dating was first invented by Willard Libby, you have to understand way before that, in 1830, the geologic column was invented. And dating is really done by the geologic position, which the geologic column doesn't exist anyplace. But 
That's another long story. Carbon dating didn't work in 1949. The lower leg of a mammoth dated 15,000 years old. The skin dated 21,000 years old. In 1963, it still wasn't working. A living mollusk shell dated 2,300 years old. It is still alive, okay? In 1970, they said, if a carbon date supports our theories, we put it in the main text. If it doesn't entirely contradict them, we put it in a footnote. If it's completely out of date, we just drop it. They picked the dates they want. 1971, a freshly killed seal was carbon dated at 1,300 years old. 1975, one part of a mammoth is 40,000 years old, another part's 26,000. This is coming from the same animal. Um, in 1981, they said, no matter how useful it is, the radiocarbon method is still not capable of giving accurate and re reliable results. There are gross discrepancies. The chronology is uneven and relative. The accepted dates are actually selected dates. This whole blessed thing is nothing but 13th century alchemy. It all depends upon which funny paper you read. Living snails, carbon dated 27,000 years old. We can go all through history. I mean, it just, it gets worse, okay? 1992, they got two mammoths, 22,000 and 16,000. The mammoths were buried side by side. In 1996, uh, they got carbon dates from the same uh, sample, ranging from 53,000 to 27,000. That's a 96% error. This is not science. Carbon dating, potassium argon dating, rubidium strontium strating, doesn't matter. They're all based on obvious assumptions, which the evolutionist doesn't like to admit normally. Uh, they said in uh, the last two years, we got an absolute date for the Gandong beds. It has the interesting value of 300,000 years, and plus or minus 300,000 years. <laughs> well, that's an absolute date, all right. Uh, they dated lava from Mount St. Helens, just erupted, uh, which uses, uses a different method, uses potassium argon dating. And dating, uh, we could spend two days on this, but dating lava from Mount St. Helens, fresh out of the, out of the uh, volcano, gave ages of ranging from 350,000 to 2.8 million. It should have been zero. Okay, it doesn't work. One experiment's worth a pound of theory any day, and I can tell you from the experimental perspective, it doesn't work, okay, and because of the assumptions it's based on. Thank you, sir. Well, um, there are a couple of interesting points brought up there. Uh, one is, I, first I'm gonna address carbon-14 dating. Um, let me just be clear here. Carbon-14 dating has very little to do with dating the age of the Earth. Its half-life is too short. It's a few thousand years. Uh, it's about 5,700 years. It's far too short to give any kind of meaningful date for uh, geolo geologic purposes. Um, so carbon-14 dating, that's why they don't use it for, car for rock dating or for fossil dating in general. Uh, occasionally they do, but most of the time they use it for organic rotting material. That's why uh, we were seeing pictures of uh, buried mammoths and things like that uh, that were buried in the ice. It's, it's more useful for that, but it is inherently less accurate than the roughly 40 other methods that are out there. There's many, many radiometric dating methods. I'm not, um, I'm not a geologist, um, but I do know, the little bit that I do know is that carbon-14 dating is, is way over-referenced. It's, really, um, it's not really relevant to dating the Earth. Um, but the methods that are are much more re re um, reliable, uh, and they're based on very sound science, which is um, the, one of the four fundamental forces of nature, the weak nuclear force. Uh, that governs how atoms decay. And it's very easily demonstrable in a, in a lab. It's um, been proven uh, repeatedly. And yes, there are some things that uh, can throw these measurements off, but they're pretty well understood at this point. So I don't want to get too technical, and I, somebody graciously um, pointed that out. So the point of radiometric dating is to be able to take an element and by measuring how much of its um, parent material, uh, for instance, a radio, radioactive material has decayed. And we know how long the half-lives are for the different um, materials. So uh, of the 40-some different methods, uh, they match 